Hello and welcome to another fully charged news update. A little bit of variation in this one. Now we've got it, we can't ignore it. Hybrids are in the news big time. Hybrids, everyone is launching hybrids. Everyone. Every major car company that used to make diesels that told us that diesels were clean, they're now making hybrids. But they're all doing it. I recently attended a large uh, vehicle launch event in Amsterdam and here's my report. Well, I'm currently in an old sugar refinery just outside Amsterdam. It's the sort of place I end up quite regularly, but I'm here for a very specific reason. I'm intrigued by what I'm going to see today. I genuinely don't know. But that company with the big sign behind me, Ford, I think it's fair to say have been a little bit late getting into the electric vehicle arena. But people from Ford have assured me that's all going to change. So I'm going to see what they're talking about. So this event with Ford has been, it's been really revealing and very interesting. So I know nothing about Ford's business strategy, but what they're clearly doing is they are, they're electrifying everything. That is brilliant. I'm really all behind that. They're basically going for hybrids. They used some terms in their presentation that I found quite difficult to, to sit through. They used the term self-charging hybrid, uh, mild hybrid, uh, and then they're also doing plug-in hybrids. So their entire range of cars from the Fiesta up to the Transit are all being partially electrified like this year, like right now. They're, they're, these vehicles are in production now. So you will be able to get a plug-in hybrid Mondeo, a Fiesta, a Focus, a Transit, although that's already happening now. I'm not really that impressed with that because it's not that new technology. Loads of other people have been doing hybrids and plug-in hybrids for decades and Ford have sort of kind of, kind of caught up. They kind of, I think they know that, but this, did stand out. Of all the vehicles that came out onto this show floor here, this was the one that was most interesting to me. This is a fully 100% electric transit delivery van, which is desperately what we need in cities now. No statistics whatsoever about range, how fast it can charge, whether it can take a 150 kilowatt charge, which would be really interesting. They weren't, they're not revealing and This comes out in 2021, so they're not exactly rushing out their electric offerings. And it is really indicative of the entire industry, I think, and I've spoken to one or two people from Ford here today. It is absolutely the case that if you have a manufacturing plant that produces engines for all these Fords, I and mean, you've got to remember, Ford's a huge company, and you've got this huge plant that's making all these engines, how do you transition from that to only making electric vehicles? It's, you know, I'm being sympathetic to them from that point of view, but from the point of view of catching up with what's going on. If they'd released one pure electric, say a Ford Focus that was pure electric, I drove one in 2013. I met the people I I've originally drove that car with here today. They are launching a Mustang inspired 100% electric car. I have no clue what that is because it's not here. They talked about it, but it isn't here. I've been walking around all day trying to find it. But this, this is here. This is brilliant that they're doing it. It's going to be 2021 before we know anything about it. It's going to be all over Europe, purely electric van. So they're doing plug-in hybrids, plug-in hybrid transits, which are better than not doing it, better than diesel. But really, at the end of the day, it kind of feels a bit late to me. I could be wrong. I'm very prejudiced. I'm very, very prejudiced against internal combustion engines. I readily admit that. But I think for fairly good reasons and Ford haven't really blown my socks off with their offerings. Well, there we go. I mean, yeah, I was very excited to go and see the uh, Mustang-inspired electric SUV, uh, which wasn't there. Uh, I don't know if they've made one. They'll reveal it at some motor show and Johnny will walk around it and get all in detail about the bodywork and the, and the, the uh, legacy that Ford have in building performance cars like the Mustang. It's a proper man's car. Anyway, hybrids, everyone's going bananas with hybrids. Everyone who has seen the, not only seen, but seen the results of the brilliant, brilliant piece of marketing that Toyota have come up with, with the self-charging moniker, 
Uh, they're all adopting it. Kia, Ford, as, as you saw in that report, they're calling them self-charging. We've got to get used to the fact that all hybrids are now self-charging. And so my only response to that is I drive a self-charging electric car. And that's already annoyed some people on Twitter. So it clearly works. It just flips it round. So if you drive an electric car, remember, it's self-charging. If you slow down an electric car or go down a hill, it is self-charging in precisely the same way that Toyota claim their hybrids, their mild hybrids, are self-charging. So it's a brilliant ad campaign. Let's adopt it. I drive a self-charging electric car. That will be just as confusing to the general public who aren't interested or don't know anything about cars as the absurd, offensive, ridiculous, stupid, ignorant, <laughs> ignorance-inducing advert. Okay, so I'm just going to have a little rant about this because I was going to leave this till later, but I'm going to do it now because I can feel it there. Yesterday, I was at an event, I met this woman, very intelligent, clearly, you know, like well-spoken, well-read, intelligent woman. And she'd heard I would drove there in an electric car. And she said, is your car electric? And I said, yes. And then she said, is it one of those new self-charging ones? That is what she said. That is a quote. So what does that tell you? It tells you that the advert is slightly misleading. It's implying through its very clever use of language and imagery, that you don't have to ever fuel these cars. They are perpetual motion machines, that Toyota have cracked the basic laws of thermodynamics and physics with this brilliant thing that's called a self-charging hybrid petrol. But that woman genuinely thought, I said, so how does this car work? Of course, immediately you ask a logical question. She's not stupid. She went, oh yeah. Oh, I see. So what, what do you have to do with it then? I said, you have to buy petrol. And, put pet and she said, oh, it's a petrol car then. And I said, yes. And she said, oh, so the advert is a lie. That is a general member of the public who's not interested in cars, who has a far more interesting life <laughs> and a more broad life than Johnny and I. So all electric cars self-charge. When you slow down or you go down a hill, the regenerative braking generates electricity that goes back into the batteries. It charges itself. So I drive an electric self-charging car and a hybrid is a petrol self-charging car. Hashtag self-charging electric, hashtag self-charging petrol. Moving on. But as I said in, uh, when I was in Amsterdam, you know, I am prejudiced. It's obvious I am prejudiced against internal combustion engines, which I personally think is a good prejudice. It's a better than a prejudice against, say, someone from another culture or someone with a different coloured skin. Those sort of prejudices aren't as positive or as forward-looking. But I think being prejudiced against a very specific piece of technology that has caused amazing benefits to the human race in the last hundred years, not going to lie that, but also with major, major drawbacks that we need to move on from. On the journey to Amsterdam, I read an actual newspaper. You know, a, a, a paper, it's, it's paper and it's got words written on it, you can read them. You can't scroll or scan or flip past it, you've got to turn the actual pages. It's the most bizarre old technology. It's lovely, it's rather quaint. But I actually read two newspaper stories in one newspaper. So these two articles, the first is about the long-term mental health impacts of air pollution that they're having on young people. Researchers analysed the experiences of more than 2,000 17-year-olds across England and Wales and found that those living in places with higher levels of nitrous oxides had a 70% higher chance of symptoms such as hearing voices or intense paranoia. Now, this is the first stage of this study. As they clearly say, it was already known that people growing up in cities had more psychotic experiences than those who live outside urban areas. And the new work suggests, it doesn't prove it yet, it suggests that toxic air is one potential reason. Uh, this type of study cannot prove a causal link yet, but that's what they're working on. That's fairly devastating news. It's very obvious and we know that the particulates that come out of exhaust pipes even clean diesel still does it. In fact, they're still cheating and they're still lying about it. And blue rinse or whatever the stuff is you put in the tank. Add blue. <laughs> blue rinse is what my granny put in her hair. Okay. It's probably the same chemicals that you put in the tank. I think it is basically urine. Anyway, but the other one was this, one, this other story, which is in the same newspaper on the same day, was a, a court case report. Heartbreaking. Properly heartbreaking. So 
I found this really upsetting because I have friends uh, and people I've known for years who, ha who, who look after and collect classic cars. And I understand why they do it. It's wonderful and they've got these beautiful old cars and they store them in large plastic bags. Uh, which protects them from the environment and from either too damp or too dry. You know, it keeps them in the right condition. And some of them are inflated, so they're in like a bubble. And some of them are just a bag that wraps them up to keep them protected, particularly if they're not using them over the winter because they don't drive classic cars in the winter. They're too valuable, you know. So they're looking after them, which I think is great. I love classic cars. They should be looked after and loved. This is such an awful story. So the owner of this beautiful classic Mercedes, brought, I think he brought it from America, he took it to his garage in somewhere in the UK, I don't know where, reversed it into the bag. That might have been the big mistake anyway. So he was immediately overcome with toxic fumes that come out of the exhaust pipe. His partner didn't know what to do, got in a panic, saw he was unconscious, ran outside the bag. She was helping guide the car into the bag, called the emergency services. They didn't know what was going on. They said, please go and get your partner out of the car and get him away from the car, which she then tried to do, but she was then overcome by the fumes. They both died. Because, and this also applies to hybrid cars, they are fossil burners. The gases that they release that come out of the exhaust are toxic to human beings. They kill people. Just going to let that rest there for a moment. So, two people died because of a car running in a plastic bag. I mean, it's the most stupid story. And it's yes, it's human error. And there's an element of um, the Darwin Awards about it. But still, people don't think. You drive a car along the road, you don't die. It's going, <laughs> all this stuff going out the back. It doesn't kill you. You drive in the queue. There's loads of cars. And they're all going, <laughs> it doesn't kill you straight away. You know, you drive it into a plastic bag. Why would you think it was any worse? You know, you drive it in a plastic bag. <laughs> Lovely, it'd be an amazing old big engine Mercedes that was pumping out loads. Ah, oh, it's heartbreaking. Anyway, I want to add on a slightly more optimistic note. Oh, it's got a, no, it's got a twist. It's got a twist. Oh, God. So Tesla have just started delivering there, as promised by Mr. Musk, people are taking delivery of these cars in the United States and they've paid $35,000 for them. Now, sort of, because it's Tesla, so it has to be incredibly con contradictory, confusing. Every, all the rules change all the time, all the announcements change all the time. It's Tesla, that's what they do. You can't, you can't order a $35,000 Tesla in, in the United States. Uh, you can order, which is £26,700, you see. So it's a lot cheaper than previous electric cars. And this is, a, it's an amazing car. You'll see my long drive in it. You can see Johnny's uh, review of it. It is, it is an exemplary machine. Uh, but, so they're talking, so at the moment, if you could buy one here for 26700 just imagine what would happen. A lot of people would buy them. Uh, you, can, you can't order that online because that's, that's the main way you buy a Tesla nowadays. But you can go into a store I can't get to the bottom of the story. You might be able to go into a store and get a special order where you get a $35,000 one. What's bizarre is they haven't, the car is exactly the same as the far more expensive one that's like $45,000. It's exactly the same car. It's got software limited range. So they've reduced the range, even though the battery is capable of doing more range. So I assume you buy it $35,000, you give them another $10,000 and they undo the software block and it's suddenly got more range. It has the same seats, but they, they've switched off the seat heaters. <laughs> so they've got seat heaters because it's exactly the same seats, but they don't turn them off. Uh, you can't get Spotify streaming music because they've turned that off. Doesn't really make a lot of sense because clearly it's costing them the same amount of money as it does to make the, the full price one. What you can buy, what you can buy now, because they're just not able to produce them as cheaply as they said. And Mr. Musk announced that they were going to be $35,000 two, two and a half years ago when they launched it. So the latest Model 3 that you can buy, that you can buy, which is cheaper, is $39,500, which I think is a much more realistic price, $40,000, let's not argue, which is around £30,000 here in the UK, which I think is a very, a very plausible price. I'm expecting a Tesla Model 3 in this country, because no prices have been announced yet, Tesla Model 3 to be between thirty and 35000 the kind of base model. So you can hope that it will be 30,000. I'm sure it will be a bit more than that. I think we will find out when the right-hand drive cars are going to arrive in the UK quite soon.
No, I do. I don't think it's going to be that long. Anyway, that's all. I've had my little rant about uh, those annoying things. Uh, I will soon be driving my daughter to uh, on a, a research trip in a self-charging electric car. Yeah, it's going to be good fun. Anyway, that's all. I just want to thank quickly a bunch of truly amazing Patreon supporters who donate $10 a month or more to keep this show going. And we are so reliant on it that I can't breathe. <laughs> That's the level of reliance. They are Mark Van Kulen, Daniel Biggins, Simon Wills, Peter Hyten, Gavin McBean, Keno Engelbracht, Creo Lucius, Peter Edge, James Stinchcomb, and Matthew Brown. Thank you so much for supporting Fully Charged. We really, really appreciate it. I'm just going to do the quick list. Don't forget to have a listen to the Fully Charged podcast that Johnny and I do every week. Fully Charged Live coming in uh, uh, June. It's getting sooner and sooner. It's going to be huge. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a good day out, family day out. Tickets are available now and they are going quite fast. So if you're, in, if, if you're teetering on deciding, you know, we have got an upper limit because we can't just sell like millions. I suppose we could. We can make it into a, like a, a sort of electric car Woodstock. Don't worry, we're not going to do that. That's it, really. I mean, do subscribe. Have a look at the Patreon link if you're the least bit interested. And as always, if you have been, thank you for watching.